Hi, today I'm going to show you the best way to manage your dot files on Linux and Unix. If I list the files in my home folder, you'll see I've got lots of files that start the period. And these are the dot files that are basically configuration files for certain services and programs that you've got installed on your computer. Now what a lot of people do is um, keep their dot files in a Git repository. And the way you do that is you would um, create a folder Type this freebsd dot files. Um, sorry, I've got the A flag. So you basically create a folder and copy all your fo um, dot files across. And the other thing that you'd need to do is, um, if I go inside the dot config directory, you'll see that um, a lot of um, programs also store their settings in the config directory um, under a folder name and then with their configuration file. Um, so not only do you have to copy all your files across all your dot files but you have to basically create recreate the folder structure as well. Now after you've done that what you typically do is create symbolic links from all the dot files in your git repository to your home folder which you do with um, dash ln dash s and then the the path to the source file so you know git freebsd dot files dot zshrc and then the path to the location where you want to store it um, in this case obviously your home folder so you create a symbolic link from your ZSHRC file in your git repository to the home directory and you have to go through and do that for every single file in your git repository so that means that you then have to create symbolic links for each of these files and all the fold all the files in the folders <coughs> there are ways to there are sort of scripts that you can run you know to go through and create symbolic links for all the files automatically but then you end up with a load of um, you know symbolic links all over the, the other all over the place um, the other issue is that when you want to actually um, come to edit all your files if I come across into the FreeBSD dot files folder you have to come across and go into each of the directories edit the file come out again go through so if you want to edit all your dot files here you're gonna to have to go through each of the folders like this several levels deep like that so it's not a very easy way to um, to manage your configuration files so what I'm going to do is show you a better way and that's using Emacs and um, tangling your dot files um, into your home directory and also into your git repository at the same time so if I come across here and open the actual files these are the um, configuration files in my git repository all of these correspond to these files down here so if I have a look at the document um, and take you through it, first of all, we've got the title um, and, and these options here, we've got startup. This, this hides all the um, source code blocks that I'm gonna show you. Um, we can really ignore this one. This just sets whether the, your, or your name is published when you sort of export the document. But this is the important one, the property header args make directory P. And that's the same as the um, make directory dash p command option, which will um, create a um, directory if it doesn't exist. So um, and that's the same command we're actually using in Emacs up here. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'll come across into, for instance, my zshrc file, and if I just move that down here, um, what you can see is. Um, these are um, basically just headers and in here what I've got is a source code block 
um, which has got a name zshrc and we define the, the the source code block and it's a configuration file you can actually at emacs you can create source code blocks um, for different languages you know whether it's um, lisp for emacs or python or shell scripts and it will apply the correct color um, syntax you know highlighting and stuff like that um, so in this source code block i have um, all the code from my zshrc file so that's the same as um, this all this code here so all the um, configuration file is actually kept inside the document inside a source code block now this next bit is where the magic happens and this is tangling so what we've got here is um, another source code block which is again we give each block a name so this is zsh home directory and again we start this source code block and it's a configuration file and um, this bit here no web basically what this does is this allows us to reference this source code block by name down here so um, we have the source code block up here and we're referencing it down here um, rather than having it in multiple places so what we can now do this next section here tangle tangling will basically take the contents of that source code block and write it out to disk in a location you specify so for instance I can take the source code from in here and then write it out to disk um, at this this location which will be my home folder and you can see down here this syntax here Z zshrc um, it, with double triangles um, or whatever you want to call them um, this name here corresponds to the name of the source code block up here so what I can do um, is also create another source code block and tangle it to a different location so in this case I'm tangling or extracting the code from this source code block into the current directory so if I come across back to um, here in my dot files you'll see I have all my doc files um, and directories in my git repository and th these files are, um, are the same as in my home folder uh, oops. so those are all the same files um, as in my doc files folder so I can basically Run, run this code from within Emacs and write out to disk the configuration files stored um, in each each of these source code blocks so if I come across to the dot, top of the document um, this is how you can actually tangle um, or write out to disk all your dot files at once you can actually tangle this entire document and it's then going to go through and it will write out all these configuration files into both my git repository and my home folder at the same time so to do that I'd press um, control C control V and then T and that will as I say write out all the configuration files to both locations at once um, I can also tangle uh, only a um, tangle of code block uh, one at a time so I might not want to you know when, when I set up a new machine I can just come through and tangle all the dot files uh, and it's everything set up and it also creates all the directories needed using the um, mkdir header argument up here but also what I might want to do is if I'm uh, working with configuration files you know adding options or taking them away I just want to um, execute one uh, block of code I just want to ex write that one block of code out um, to my home folder and um, the current directory I don't want to write out the entire document so to do that I'd run CU um, that be control U control C control V T um, that's the thing about Emacs it does have quite long um, 
uh, keyboard shortcuts. I, b I believe there's a program called Hydro which lets you redefine the keyboard shortcuts so you can actually shorten them. Um, but basically, I'll show you how I would um, write this out. So if, if for example, I've come through and I've you know edited my ZSHRC file, and then I want to um, write that out to um, my Git repository and and the home directory, so the changes take effect. I'll, I'll basically I come through to the source code block, edit it, um, and then. I'd come down to this section here, this tangled section, and what you do is you run the um, keyboard shortcuts on the source code blocks um, with the tangle option. You don't run them up here on the source code block with the configuration file in. So to write this out, basically I'd do cu cut, and it's tangled that out to um, my home directory. So you can see here that's the location if I just move across that's the location we specified tilde is the location via home folder now down here is the current directory which is the same directory as the um, freebsd.files.org file so in my git repository here so once I've made the changes I can apply them to my home directory and store them in my git repository so I'd run cut and it's written the uh, the code out to the git repository so basically that means that um, you kind of got a, a double backup mechanism you've got all your configuration files as you'd normally have them all written out um, but then you also have them all in one place in your um, .org file and say so the reason why this is so much more convenient is because um, if I want to edit all my configuration files, I can just come through, bang, edit that, move on to you know Xmod map, edit that, um, tangle it, um, come through, versus going in, edit, opening each one of these files individually, going into all of these folders in and out, and editing all the files. Um, you know you don't have an overview of all your dot files yeah you, you can't you can't visualize all of these files in one place because you know they're that they're obviously individual files and in different folders so you're not seeing them all in one document um, which is much more convenient when you're trying to um, actually debug something you know um, if you if, you know if you want to come into your tmux um, and change it or you know if you want to go through and um, apply several different settings for something supposing you're setting up a new program and you've got to edit, edit several configuration files in different locations um, and, you know you're looking at some, some some screen with all these different options you need to add to these different files it's a hell of a lot easier if you just have to edit one file you're much less likely to make mistakes um, editing your configuration files um, so this is uh, a really much more uh, user-friendly uh, way of managing your dot files um, all in one place um, and you can basically batch um, pro process all of your dot files at once to write them out to disk in your home directory or in the current directory at once um, you know you can move move these up and down these um, uh, the, these headings so you can put your you know your most important dot files you work on a lot up here or you know you, the ones you you edit less down here um, and you just come through um, edit all your source code blocks and then come just come down and tangle them and the other thing that you could actually do if I come back down here is um, you can also tangle from the command line so um, as well as um, opening up this document and um, writing all the configuration files out to disk at once um, from within Emacs 
you can also do the same thing on the command line um, running emacs dash dash batch dash l org dash eval um, and then in single quotes in um, you know what these things are, I forget what the bleeding things are called not brackets or braces or whatever they are org babble tangle file and then the actual file name you know the path to the file and basically what that will do is exactly the same thing it will write out all of your configuration file um, files from within that org file to disk in the locations that you specified so as I said basically you can um, define all the locations here um, let me just find one that's um, aria 2c for instance um, for instance aria 2c uh, which is a downloading program writes its configuration files to config aria2 um, aria2.config using the um, mkdirp option um, in the header arguments will basically create this directory structure if it doesn't exist um, which basically means that you don't you don't have to switch to the command line and you know create the folder structure to put your configuration files in when you're setting up a new machine this will do it all for you in one go um, so that's why um, Emacs um, is a really good way to um, manage um, all your sort of configuration files um, and then basically sort of write them out to disk um, in one go um, and as I said you can specify multiple locations so um, what I'm doing is I'm writing them out to my home folder and um, the current directory but what you can also do with um, Emacs is um, it has a feature called Tramp that will actually allow you to connect via shush and um, write out the contents of files to another machine so you could actually tangle this um, document to a remote server so you could actually have um, org files um, with all all the dot files um, and configuration for a server because you can also not only can you tangle to remote machine but you can actually um, using DOAS and sudo you can actually um, tangle the files to um, you know locations where you'd need root access to um, so that will allow you to write out all the configuration files for you know perhaps like an unbound server or um, you know typically a lot of programs for instance the music player daemon on FreeBSD stores its configuration file um, under something like user local etc or something um, rather than your home directory by default um, so you can actually also use this to write to um, areas where you need sudo or doas root access um, to edit the file so say you can also use this so that uh, you can write this configuration file to a remote server um, and set that machine up um, so that, that's another option that you can use this for but obviously you need to get into Emacs to use this um, but this is another good reason to actually have a look at Emacs rather than something like Vim which a lot of people use um, so this is one of the reasons that I use um, Emacs as opposed to Vim because it will let me manage my dot files all in one place run a couple of keyboard shortcuts it writes out the code into multiple locations so um, I have multiple backups and I can keep everything in one file so I've got an overview of all my dot files um, and it's just a lot easier to manage.